You're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be joined by lead author, Dr. Philip Meese. He's Director of Rheumatology Research at the Swedish Medical Center, Providence St. Joseph Health, and Clinical Professor at the University of Washington School of Medicine. He's joining us to talk about some new data from the Phase 3 Discover 1 and Discover 2 studies uh, that's published in this month's Lancet Rheumatology on the efficacy of guselcomab on patients with active psoriatic arthritis. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Meese. Thank you very much, Neil, for, uh, uh, for this conversation. Director of Rheumatology Research at the Swedish Medical Center, give us a brief look into your professional background, and then let's talk about uh, psoriatic arthritis and how it differs from other forms. I've been a, a rheumatologist practicing in Seattle since 1982 uh, and uh, have a very busy and active consulting and treatment practice uh, where, wherein I focus on treatment of patients with inflammatory rheumatic diseases that have a special interest in psoriatic arthritis and a condition called axial spondyloarthritis or ankylosing spondylitis is an older term. Uh, and uh, so uh, the uh, psoriatic arthritis uh, is a uh, condition that occurs in approximately 30% of patients with psoriasis, and we know that psoriasis occurs in about 3% of the U.S. population, so it's a pretty common condition. It uh, presents uh, typically in a patient who's had long-standing psoriasis, the skin condition, and they begin to develop manifestations of what we call peripheral joint disease, that is inflammation, swelling, pain in joints of the hands, wrists knees, feet, and so forth. Um, But they can also have other manifestations as well, including inflammation and pain where tendons or ligaments insert into bone that we call emphysitis. They can have very swollen digits that look like sausages, and we call that dactylitis. But about 30% or so, sometimes 40% of patients will have inflammation of spinal uh, uh, elements. This includes the joints of the spine, the the ligaments of the spine, and uh, the sacroiliac joints at the base of the spine. Uh, And this can be a quite disabling feature uh, of psoriatic arthritis. And and, uh, the the focus of this particular uh, sub-study of Discover 1 and 2 was focused on those particular patients. So is it easily diagnosed or is it often misdiagnosed as some other form of arthritis or some other type of condition? I wish I could say that it was easily diagnosed. Mm-hmm. And to an experienced rheumatologist, it's not difficult. The, the, the challenge is getting the patients to rheumatologists to evaluate. So, for example, I uh, was involved in a study that we published uh, in 2013 where we um, uh, had um, dermatologist in 40 different cities in Europe and North America refer about a thousand patients with psoriasis to rheumatologist and 30 percent of those patients were, were uh, regardless of musculoskeletal symptoms were, were diagnosed as having psoriatic arthritis importantly 41 percent never knew that they had psoriatic arthritis before they became engaged in this study and were evaluated by a rheumatologist. So the challenge is uh, having them seen by a rheumatologist, and then then, it, then the uh, diagnosis can be pretty speedy. Was Discover 1 and Discover 2 conducted at the same time? They were done uh, more or less in parallel. Uh, Discover 1 was a slightly smaller study, and it included 30% of patients who had previously been treated uh, with what we call biologic medications. Mm-hmm. TNF inhibitors uh, such as uh, the Tannercept or uh, uh, Adalimumab. Uh, and then Discover 2, a larger trial with patients that had uh, never been exposed to biologic medications and were slightly earlier in the treatment course. Uh, and uh, the overall results of both studies showed that uh, Guzelcomab, which is what we call a P19 interleukin-23 inhibitor was highly effective in treating uh, multiple uh, aspects of the disease, including peripheral joints, skin disease, 
uh, emphysitis, dactylitis, improving function, quality of life, as well as um, uh, improving uh, the patient to the state of a target of uh, almost remission, which we call minimal disease activity. Uh, and so it was, it was very successful. Uh, uh, but then uh, that led us to have a further question about uh, the axial component. So getting into the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, this particular question is, uh, what is the challenge in front of us? So it's fairly easy to evaluate peripheral joints, skin, and you palpate with your fingers, the examiner's fingers, the peripheral joints. You can tell about pain and swelling. You can look at the skin and measure its improvements. But the spine is another question. It's, you can't really palpate the spine. Uh, you, you, uh, for, you need imaging studies of the spine to tell whether or not uh, the inflammatory disease is present in the spine. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it's a little bit harder to measure. And historically, in psoriatic arthritis trials, uh, we either haven't evaluated the spine at all, uh, even though the patient may have spine disease and it may be changing and getting better with, with uh, treatment, um, or um, we do a separate set of studies in patients with a condition called ankylosing spondylitis and just use the data from that to assume that a drug may work or not in the inflammatory spine disease. In this particular trial, a, a novel approach was taken. The investigators uh, were asking both Discover 1 and 2 to identify patients that they had thought had axial psoriatic arthritis and through their ob objective determination of their spine disease was that the patients in this subgroup had to have imaging changes, either x-ray or MRI, consistent with inflammation in the sacroiliac joints, which is one of the cardinal uh, areas where inflammation may occur when there is axial PSA. And that was determined, and they, they, it was about 30% of the patients in both trials. And they had all of the usual uh, measures that we use in axial spondylarthritis trials to determine uh, the, the severity of disease at baseline, which was very active, and then showed improvement over time with treatment uh, using typical measures such as the BASDI, the BASDI pain, uh, spine pain question, uh, a measure called the ASDAS. Uh, and uh, it, it was uh, quite uh, good in improving uh, the patient's spine symptoms. Uh, so uh, that has led the um, maker of the drug uh, to decide uh, to go ahead and do a dedicated trial just to axial PSA patients, uh, do sophisticated MRI imaging at baseline and along uh, the course of treatment uh, to uh, further uh, verify uh, the efficacy of the drug in treating uh, the spine uh, component, which is very important for patients. Well, give us a website where we can learn more about this study, if you would. Now, the information that I have is it's published in a journal called The Lancet. And, and so by going to the Lancet website, you would be able to identify uh, the, the paper. www.thelancet.com. That's correct. Uh, the other way of doing it would be to go into what's called PubMed and looking up the paper, uh, uh, either using a mine name or uh, potentially the name of the drug, uh, Grisel Command, to, to find it. Well, Dr. Meese, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for your time. All right. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Philip Meese. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.